Hi everyone. Look what I got. <laughs> I got almost 10 pounds of my delicious goat milk powdered. I've been waiting on this for a while actually, because he made some for me. Well, well, let me explain for those of you who don't know. I'm surrounded by cattle farms <laughs> and dairies. And I have friends in the dairy. Well, they're not friends as much as they are neighbors. And there is a difference, but we'll, we'll talk about that another time. But I trade goat milk products, whether it be goat milk lotion or soaps or various other products with someone else to dry milk for me. That's the one thing that he does. This is also, matter of fact, this is the same guy that I got the buffalo milk from. And he dehydrates that. And he did this for me. And I can't tell you how happy I am because, yes, I have several dehydrators myself, as I've shown in a couple of different videos, but they're not ideal for handling liquids and especially large amounts of liquid. Oh, you could dry some smaller pans, I suppose, and get an ounce here and an ounce there, but. I wanted a lot <laughs> because I love using the powdered goat milk in some of my products, such as the one I'm about to make for you. And what I'm doing, and I've done this very, very similar recipe before, I'm about to make a large batch of bath salts and bath milk, a combination. that I love that combination of wonderful salts and goat milk. So to this recipe, I'll be adding five pounds of my own organic dried goat milk. I have five pounds of pink sea salt, five pounds of uh, dead sea salt, five pounds of just Texas sea salt, and five pounds of Epsom salt. To this, I'll be adding magnesium salt, which is different than Epsom salt. I know that some people confuse the two, um, but ma uh, the magnesium salts are magnesium chloride, uh, which is different than Epsom salt, which is magnesium sulfate. And they're both fantastic products, and you'll see them used a lot in different recipes. And I'm going to be using both in this. So I'm going to start putting this together here. So give me a moment and move things out of the way here. I have plenty of space, but I don't have a large area to film in. It's just the way I have to set up my camera and such. I just Let's see, I can back out the camera a little bit there. Yeah. Okay. So I'm not putting this in in any specific order. And all these clumps that you may see, like in the uh, Himalayan pink salt, I will break those up. So that's the pink salt. So I'll just add these in one at a time. Wonderful goat milk. Oh, and it does powder up. <laughs> and I always suggest you wear a mask when you're dealing with things that have a lot of powder. It's just better for your uh, system. So I'm going to add in my magnesium flakes. do some stirring. Always use something that's strong because this stuff is heavy so if you're stirring up 
large amounts like I'm doing here, 25, 30 pounds, you're gonna need a big spoon or a, a big tool like this to incorporate it. Oop. Now, I customize this depending on what the customer wants. So, and I usually only do two. Uh, I'll do a lavender, which means it'll have lavender essential oil and lavender flowers in it. Unless you prefer not to have the flowers. Some people don't like flowers floating around in their bathtub. But of course you can put it in a, a small bag of some kind, of, like a little uh, muslin bag or something, so that they don't float around, but they're still there scenting your tub. And I offered in a rose, which I fragrance with Rose Absolute and Rose Petals Organic in both cases. Both the roses and the lavender are organic. I'm also, and I just think this is beautiful in the tub, and it adds a nice sparkle to your sea salt and goat milk as well. Talk about a luxurious bath. The salts and the milk, well, just the lactic acid alone from the milk will help to loosen up dead skin cells and help to expose those nice fresh skin cells make you look more youthful and the salts are just delicious I'm gonna put all this on the scrim sorry I'm a bit out of breath <laughs> from doing this mixing but then let me show you now how I will package this up. So the way I'm now packaging this are in these bags. Why have I switched to these? Well, first of all, don't you love they stand up? I do. But the main reason why I'm switching to a bag is to save you money on shipping. Now, let me give you an example. I used to sell nine ounces and it came in a glass jar that weighed six to seven ounces. And by the time I packaged it up, well, this was a pretty heavy item and you were getting a lot less. By reducing the jar, I'm now able to give a lot more for the same price. And that just feels really good because now if I package it just right, 14 ounces, that's under a pound. And by the time it's in the envelope and packed up, it's still under a pound. So it can go first class, thus saving several dollars. Uh, and I think that's just a wonderful benefit to the customer. I hate, I hate shipping charges because there's nothing I can do about them. They're based on what the post office has done. And what you may not realize is the post office just raised its fees again in January. So it just keeps getting costlier and costlier, but I'm going to do everything I can to try to save. And one of the ways of doing that and being more economic, um, environmentally responsible to using craft bags. Yes, I realize there is a small plastic window here, but if you want to cut that out and mail it back to me, I will recycle it myself. So you don't have to. But if you can, you can drop it off at with your plastic recycling. Um, if you you know find a use for it, you could reuse the bag for uh, other things too. As long as it's bath related, of course I wouldn't put food items in here once you've used it for this. But you could still store items and it's your own salts or um, you know other things like that or things that you use even in if you have have your own soaping business. Um, they're good for storing various different things, clays and powders to keep them dry. Anyway, I'm, I'm going on and on, aren't I? But I just wanted to show you this change in the packaging. And um, I'm happy with it. And I think that you might enjoy this. Uh, if nothing else, I've shown you a recipe you can use to make as well. Um, I'm not pushing for... Uh, I, sometimes these videos come across 
as just a marketing gimmick, and I don't mean for them to come across that way. I really don't. Um, of course, I like when people buy their products because it allows me to make more products, but I really do this m more, in my mind anyway, to share with others on how to do things. And this is nothing new or original. I've done them myself before. Other people make them. We all have our own ways, our little, and I like that about it. We can all do it a little bit differently and put our own signature on it. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this, everyone. Have a fantastic day, and I'll see you back soon. Goodbye.